Hello everybody, it's Jack Cox, author of Love Not Fear. I want to talk to you a little bit about leaders. I've got this not very straight. I want to talk to you a little bit about leaders today. All the nonsense that's going on in America at the moment. Let's start with that. I personally have seen enough evidence to suggest that that election was rigged. Do I have proof? No, I don't. Only a court of law can decide whether or not evidence is proof. I don't see any evidence. And have I been speaking out about it? Yes, a lot. Does that mean I'm a Trump supporter? No, it doesn't. I don't support any leader. We don't need leaders. The problem is that people have been used to looking outside of themselves for a saviour, whether it's in religion or in politics, Now, I don't want to disrespect anybody's religion. I'm a great believer in freedom of religion. But let's just take as an example the story of Jesus. The organised Christian religions, religious, religious sects, have pushed this idea that a saviour is coming, that Jesus is the saviour and he's going to return. Uh, maybe he will and maybe he won't, I mean, I don't know. Personally, I think it's unlikely. As far as I'm concerned, he was a very, very wise man who died nearly 2,000 years ago. And I think he was probably such a wise man that he was in his last earthly incarnation. So no, I don't think he's going to come back in physical form. But I don't think that's what the story means. I think what's going to be birthed isn't Jesus in a new body, but the Christ consciousness within all of us. I think that's what the story means. And another way of saying that is we're going to evolve into fifth dimensional consciousness. With the coming of the age of Aquarius. And that's what I believe it means. That's my personal belief. I'm not dissing anybody else's beliefs. I respect other people's beliefs and I, I beliefs and I ask them to respect mine. But I think we've got to stop looking outside of ourselves for a saviour. Trump isn't going to be the saviour. QAnon is not. Well, it's a load of BS in my opinion. It's not the saviour. Yes, Trump has been treated exceedingly badly, exceedingly badly, over the last four years, five years, by the media. His social media accounts being closed down is completely out of order. The whole censorship that we're living through at the moment is completely out of order. Should never ever be allowed to happen. But I'd be saying the same thing if it was happening to Biden or Hillary Clinton. People must be allowed to speak. And if we're going to have governments, for the time being we're going to have governments, and those governments have to be accountable to the people. They have to be freely and fairly elected. And they must be left alone to do their work. 
to represent the people, which is what they're meant to do. In my book, Love Not Fear, most of the things I suggest in there for building a, a new and better future have nothing to do with government. The things we can do ourselves, the way we treat one another. But there's a couple of things in there that are to do with government, and one of those is something as a chapter that I call We Have the Technology, We Can Rebuild Our Democracy. And I use the example of the British Parliament in London. And I'm going to be using the words relevant to that. But whatever your parliament is called, whether it's called Congress or the House of Representatives, or whatever it happens to be called in whichever country you happen to be watching this from, the same basic principle occurs. And, and that's that we have not 100%, but reasonably secure systems, chip and pin, that enable us to transact billions and billions of pounds and dollars and euros reasonably securely. Nothing is 100% secure. A hell of a lot more secure than the voting machines that just is in America. And we can use that technology. Now take a member of parliament or whatever the equivalent, equivalent is in your country. Say so that Member of Parliament represents a constituency of, I don't know, 20,000 people. Just as a ballpark figure, I don't know. Then in Parliament, at every vote in Parliament, that MP would be able to cast 20,000 votes. Okay? And if another MP represented a constituency of 30,000 people, then that MP would be able to cast 30,000 votes. But we'd also have a chip and pin, all of us, each one of us, you and me. So we can log into our computers or our smartphones or maybe there'd be ATM type machines for doing it in public places for people who don't have computers and smartphones and card readers. And in every single vote in Parliament, in the House, you and me and Ethel on the till would be able to cast our own vote. So take MP John Smith, MP, John Smith MP, I don't know, who has this 20,000 votes. And he's going to Parliament to speak on behalf of his constituencies, his constituents, and to vote for them. So the software would calculate how many people in his constituency voted themselves. Say a thousand voted for themselves. So his vote in that particular um, debate would be 19,000 because 1,000 have already voted for themselves. Yeah? And his job would be to represent the people who didn't want to vote for themselves in that particular issue. Maybe it's an issue they're not interested in. Maybe they were just busy doing other things. That should be the job of the MP, not to vote on behalf of all of his or her constituents, but to vote on behalf of the ones that, for whatever reason, choose not to vote for themselves. We have the technology, we can rebuild our democracy. It's part of a transition. This is just the first stage that I'm suggesting of a transition from our present top-down government bodies to the future 
bottom-up system of government. And I think when we all evolved to fifth dimensional consciousness and we have these bottom-up governments, we won't even be calling them governments, we'll probably have another word for it, because there won't be anything like the governments we have today. Now I'm talking about maybe 100, 150 years, maybe 200 years in the future, maybe. But maybe we could do it now. If we have the will, you and me, and Ethel on the till, if we have the, the will, we can make it happen now. And the other thing I want to talk to you today about is censorship. Because uh, apart from the, I'm going to be so careful with my words here because the censorship is closing down social media accounts, closing down. I could be closed down off um, YouTube any, any time if I let the wrong word come out of my mouth. So I'm going to do what they did on, what Peter did on um, Hearts of Oak the other day. I'm going to call it the five letter F word. <laughs> but if I mention the five letter F word, on here, I could be closed down. Now that is wrong. That is so bloody wrong. And we must not allow it to continue. Please, I've been, I put it all the time on, Facebook is the most popular channel that I'm on. I reach the most people through that. But I do realise that it be, could be closed down at any time. I have lots and lots of other accounts. Um, and please do come along. I, I post the other accounts up on Facebook from time to time. If you see it, grab hold of it. Maybe I'll put a list of them down below here as well in the comment, in the um, description. Join me on the other platforms, please. We need to get off the main platforms. Some people say we're hurtling towards fascism and some people say we're hurtling towards communism and I think we're realising more and more now what I wrote two, three years ago in my book that communism and capital and uh, communism and fascism are just two different faces of totalitarianism they're certainly not opposites and the straight line model of politics that puts communism at one end and fascism at the other end is just plain bs they belong right together right at one, one end together touching touching I put them both on the far left. So what am I going to put on the far right? <laughs> Freedom. Pure anarchy in its correct usage of that word. Freedom. And we have to evolve our consciousness. And we are evolving our consciousness, not have to. I mean, we can't stop it. It's happening. Um, and people who are not ready to evolve just won't reincarnate onto this planet anymore. They'll go somewhere else. And as we get into fifth dimensional consciousness, we won't have to have governments telling us not to kill each other, not to rape each other, not to interfere with little kids. Not to steal from one another because it would never enter our heads to do such a crazy thing so we don't need to be told not to and that's happening it's happening quickly so we don't need the top-down
political systems anymore. And the great, I mean, uh, let's just talk briefly about the Great Reset. The Great Reset is being pushed by the World Economic Forum that represents the thousand biggest multinational corporations in the, in, on the planet. And these people, if they're not even them, I mean it's probably no more than a hundred people that control all of those, that control all the political systems of the world, all the governments of the world. Boris Johnson is just a puppet doing as he's told and squirming, at least squirming when he's doing it. He's a chocolate teapot, isn't he? Eh? <laughs> we thought he was going to be the great leader that came to save us. At least came to save democracy, uh, uh, came to save Brexit. He's got us a Brexit deal and good on him for that. But all. Anyway, let me get started on that one. But what is this lockdown system for? What's it for? Just ask yourself, what's it for? I mean, I spent some time in journalism. Follow the money. Who's gaining? Well, all the big multinational companies, aren't they? All the little corner shops are being closed down. All the high street shops are being closed down. Everything's being delivered by Amazon. <laughs> and of course, Amazon, uh, highly represented within the World Economic Forum. They already control everything. They just want to be able to come out and admit that they control everything. And that's what it's all about, it's about putting the top multinational companies in charge of the world. They already are, but it's making it official. Well, you can't get any more top down than that. And another word for top down, of course, is centralised, centralisation. The more we move towards a decentralised uh, ec economy and a decentralized uh, political system, the more things like the World Economic Forum will not be able to happen. And it really is a, the Great Reset really is a, a last ditch attempt of a dying system in panic. It won't come to anything. More and more people are waking up now. The lockdowns have transferred billions and billions and billions of pounds and dollars and euros into Amazon and the other big companies. Yes, such all. But it's also served to wake a lot of people up. And we ain't standing for it. Some people are saying that currency is going to go digital and I think it probably be well. And it'll be digital along um, a Chinese social credit system whereby you don't have access to your money if you're not being a good boy or a good girl and doing what the government tell you to do and the deep state tell you to do through the government. It's the deep state that control everything, the government, the media, everything. And the more we rebel, uh, we won't be able to spend our own money anymore. We may even be going off to re-education camps. It's all coming if we don't stand up now. We've got to stand up now. Don't wait until it all gets out of control. Just say no. I did not consent. I will not comply. If enough of us do that, then they will give up. So an alternative economy, some people are putting forward this alternative um, currency of Bitcoin, which is probably good. Personally, I've tried to get some and I found the whole system too complicated. I managed to work it out. But maybe I'll try again.
Um, but the thing I propose, as you know, is, is to, we don't need any currency. We can do away with money altogether. There's a better alternative to both co uh, socialism and capitalism, and that is an informal free gift economy. <coughs> oh, excuse me. No more government tyrants. No more corporate tyrants. Just peer-to-peer -peer generosity and helping each other to thrive. We can do that, can't we? Then they can't have their social credit system, can they? Because we don't need their money anymore. We're setting ourselves free. We can set ourselves free. And the first thing we have to do to set ourselves free is set ourselves free from money and set ourselves free from credit. Just freely giving and freely receiving. Giving and not counting the cost. Toiling and not asking for any reward. And how can we do that? Because everybody else is doing the same thing for us. As I said in my last video, I think it was my last one, back in the olden days when I used to work in um, I used to, well, part of my job was checking incoming invoices. A lot of them used to have a sticker on them saying, please pay us so we can pay them so they can pay you. And I've adopted that now. I've adapted that into, please don't invoice us so we won't have to invoice them so they won't have to invoice you. Yeah, let's <laughs> just stop all this money nonsense. Money controls us, so let's ditch it. Move to an informal free gift economy with no leaders, not even any gurus. I mean, you know, we're all our own gurus. Just go with what's in your own heart. Stop your, stop your thinking for five minutes and just go with your heart. Go with what your heart is saying. Why are people bad? Why do we have so many laws to stop people being bad? Why do people want to be bad? Because the system, the game we did not devise, as I talk about in my book, the system that we're born into makes us bad. It puts us in fear. It puts us in competition with one another. It's this Piscean Big fish eat little fish eat little fish world that's passing away. Let's just help each other to thrive. Anyway, that's it for today. I love you all. Namaste.